Hello, children. How are you today? Pastor Snali here. I hope you're fine and you're doing well. I brought you another story today, a Bible story. But before we look at our story, I want us to I want to sing sing you a song. Uh, we'll be talking about obedience, and um, I was thinking about this song, um, cooperation. I'll try and sing it. You help me where you are, okay? Cooperation is a big word, and so is obedience. But when I do what my papa says, do what my mama says, seems to make a big difference. Oh, my mama teaches me cooperation. She says I'm old enough to lend her hand. Yeah. So I pick up all my toys and I don't make too much noise. I think I'm doing all that I can. Cooperation is a big word. And so is obedience. Ah. But when I do what my papa says, do what my mama says, seems to make a big difference. Ha. But I like helping my mother. And I like minding my daddy. Because when I'm good and they know it, their faces will show it. And it will make me feel very glad. Cooperation is a big word. And so is obedience. But when I do what my papa says, do what my mama says, seems to make a big difference. One more time. Cooperation is a big word. And so is obedience, ah, uh -huh. but when I do what my papa says, do what my mama says, seems to make a big difference. All right, so today we're talking about obedience, and I brought you a story. Our story is coming from the book of 1 Kings chapter 13, the whole chapter, 1 Kings chapter 13, and we meet there a man, a prophet, whose name we are not told. The Bible just says a prophet or a man of God, a man of God. So there is a man of God and there is a king. This king is called King Jeroboam, but today we'll call him King Jerry, King Jerry. So we've got the man of God, King Jerry, and then we'll look at the other characters as we, as we go along with our story. So it happened that one time, the man of God was instructed by God to go to Bethel. Bethel was a place of sacrifice, a place of worship where people came, where the Israelites came and brought their sacrifices and sacrificed everything that was supposed to be going to God. And then at Bethel, this one time, um, King Jerry was there. Uh, let's take this to be our altar, okay? He was there on the altar having come to burn incense, was a she in paper. So he put his incense there and he was worshipping and he was, you know, sacrificing on, 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 on the altar. And so the Bible says there came a man of God, this man, the prophet without, without a name, whose name were not given. And so when the prophet got there, he, was, he, had, he had come to prophesy uh, on the altar and he says to the altar, because Jeroboam was there, because King Jerry was there, he says, altar, O oh altar, you altar, upon you shall come a child from the family of David. And this child is going to make sacrifices on, of people there, is going to end all these things that people are doing wrongly on this very altar. So Jeroboam stood there and he was listening to the man of God bringing this up. Uh, this prophecy, and he wasn't happy because he knew that what he was doing was wrong. So Jeroboam looks at the, at the man of God, and you know kings, you know, they move with their soldiers, muscular soldiers, strong soldiers, and they all were there. And then he says to them, guys, get out of him. I don't like what he's saying. Seize him, bind him, and bring him here. So he pointed with his hand, and as he pointed with his hand like that, the Bible says, his hand withered. His hand dried. He could not bring it back. It stood just like that. He tried to bring it back. He could not bring it back. His hand just stood there. It was dry. His soldiers quickly came to him and said, King, King Jerry, what's happening? What's happening, King? Guys, I can't bring back my hand. 
please help me bring back my hand. I'm struggling to bring back my hand. They all tried. You know those strong men tried to bring back that. I can't bring back my hand. Please, please, don't go away. Don't go away. He started calling to this man of God. Don't go away. Please, 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 please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't kill you. Actually, please, just, just beg. Pray for me that God fixes my hand again. Please, please, I beg you. And he says, okay, it's fine. Let me pray for you. The man of God prayed. Lord, may you deliver the king and make his hand fine again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When he said amen, the hand went back there. And he was okay. He was frightened. He was scared for some moment. And he says, ah, what sort of person does this to a king? What kind of a person is this? He was puzzled. And then he says, okay, fine. Let me deal with him. I will invite him to, his, to my house. And then I will organize some guys to take hold of him, to bind him and to kill him. Because of what he has done to me. I'm a king, man. How can someone do this to a king? No, 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 no. It's not good. So while he was still contemplating on that, he extends his invitation to this man. And he says, oh, man of God, I'm inviting you to come to my place, to the king's palace. Beautiful place. Large, double-story, beautiful gardens hanging out there. I need you to come to my place and see and have supper and have at least a meal with me. And he says to him, oh, king, even if you are to give me half of your house, I will not go with you and I'm not coming with you. I'm not coming with you, oh, king. For the word of the Lord has said to me, where I go, I must eat not bread. I must drink no wine. I must not use the way I used in coming here. When I go back, I need to change the way. And the king said, Ash. I've missed him. He got up, got at his loins, left. Hey, alas, while all that withering of hand was happening, guess what? There were some few boys who were watching from a distance, looking at what was happening at Bethel at the altar, seeing the king and his hand withering, drying. And these guys were there, looking attentively what was taking place at the out. And guess what? These were not just simple boys. They were PKs. Pastor's kids. Huh? They were sons of a prophet. An old prophet. An old prophet. At that time, he had stopped receiving any messages from God because of some reason. I don't know. He was an old prophet with his sons there. So these two boys quickly rushed home and they rushed to their father, just like the way you guys do it when you're bringing news to your mom and father. They got there and said, Daddy! <laughs> Chai! You didn't see what we saw today. Dead, 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 dead. Today we saw a real, my babo, a real, real prophet. Ah, you are joking. We saw a prophet today. Dead. <laughs> you don't want to hear what this guy did. To the king, King Jeroboam was summarized to nothing today. Ah, ah. The father says, oh, tell me about it, guys. What happened? The boy started narrating the story. Dead. <laughs> the king was mad. His hand was made to, to be dry. To, it withered because the prophet got there and the prophet said, they, they narrated the story and the father said, oh, what kind of a prophet would do this? Please, set with the donkey for me. I need to rush. I need, I need to run after him. Which direction did he take? They started telling him. He went this direction. They said with the donkey. He left. Said with the donkey. So after covering some, some, some kilometers, he found the man of God sitting under the oak tree. Big, big, big oak tree. Sitting there. And he says to him, are you the man of God who was at Bethel? And he looked at him. I don't know whether he was hungry, he was thirsty. I don't know, I don't know. He looks at him and he says to him, Yes, I am the man of God. And he says to him, Okay, fine. The angel came to me and said to me, I must come and pick you, take you to my place, give you water to drink, give you bread, and give you a place to rest. Then you will continue with your journey tomorrow. Well, he was lying. 
the prophet was lying. Take note of that, okay? The old prophet was lying. And so, he listens to him. He says to him, okay, fine, but God told me not to do this and that. He told me not to use the way I used coming here. He also told me not to drink any water, not to eat any bread. But how come you're telling me God has sent you to say this to me? He says, Amen. I'm also a prophet like you. This is why I've been sent to you. Follow me. They both settled on the donkey. They left. He disobeyed God. Why would he follow man? When God spoke to him directly and gave him the message about Jeroboam, why then would he choose to listen to someone else telling him something? Friends, 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 we need to be careful. When God has spoken, no one else should change what God has said. Because when God says, this is my commandment and you need to follow it, no one else should change you from following what the Lord has said. It was a very sad narrative. He followed him, went to his place, forgot about what the Lord has said to him, ate bread, drank water, relaxed, you know, sitting like a tycoon, relaxing against the instruction of the Lord. And then God in his anger decided to visit him at that very moment. Instead of talking to him directly, because this time around he has decided to listen to the old prophet, God sent his message to the old prophet and said to him, Now, because he has disobeyed my word, you, old prophet, tell him now that he is not going to be buried with his fathers, his carcass, or his body, will be eaten, mauled on by the lions. He is not going to get to his destination. He will die along the way. Oh, and the old prophet turned to the man of God and said to him, sad, 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 sad news I bring you, sad news I bring you. What is it? The word of the Lord has come to me. God has said, because you have been disobedient, you are not going to be buried with your fathers. Instead, you are going to be mauled by a lion before you get to your destination. He could not apologize for lying to him. He just left the matter as it is. Instead, he settled a donkey for him, organized transport for him, gave him free transport, didn't charge him anything. Says, right on this donkey, off you go. He got up, got on the donkey, left. And the word of the Lord was fulfilled just as God had said. There came a lion. And you know lions, they kill donkeys, they eat donkeys. Actually, when there's a human being and a donkey, the lion would prefer a donkey. Maybe see the human being later. But the lion attacked the man. He fell off from the donkey. It ate him. It killed him. It did not finish all his carcass. He was lying there on the ground. The donkey did not run away from the lion. It stood still. I'm not sure whether it was scared of the lion, but the donkey stood next to the carcass, the dead body, and the lion stood next to the donkey. So there was lying a dead body, a living donkey, a living lion, and the people who were passing by that way saw these three. Take note, the lion did not attack anybody who was passing by. Instead, it stood there. Neither did it attack the donkey that was carrying the man of God. Instead, it stood there. And the word was sent to the old prophet saying, the man of God has been mauled by a lion. And he came, he picked him, got him to the donkey to bury him. When he got him, the lion still did not bite him. It did not have any problem with him because 
it had not come to eat anyone else except the men who had disobeyed the word of the Lord. Now listen to the story. This is the message that the Lord has given us today. And as young boys and girls, as we are growing, I need you, my young brothers and sisters, to pay attention to the instructions of the Lord. When God says, do this, don't do that. Do exactly what the Lord has asked you to do because your distraction, okay, your distraction is going to come prepared only for you and not for anyone else. Should you disobey God and think other people will die along with you? No, 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 no. God will send you your own lion that will maul on you and you will be dead to nothing. This is not coming to scare you. I am saying to you, the Lord has said to us, follow my commandments and if you love me, keep my commandments. How best do we show that we love God? By keeping his commandments. And should God say to you, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Let no one else come to you and say, no man, I'm also a prophet. I'm also a Bible and say to you, no, 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 no. The Sabbath was nailed to the cross. No, no. Say to them, for thus says the Lord. And because I love my Lord, I will remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And in this way, you will grow and you will grow and you will grow. Never shall you be mauled by the lions of the evil but you will stay forever in the house of the Lord. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for being so kind to us because you have given us a prophet without bones, which is the Bible. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, because this Bible has everything we need to take us to heaven. We therefore pray today that while we read the Bible, may we read the Bible and grow every day. Give us the spirit to study your word so that we may grow from day to day. May we not neglect our Bibles because we are going to shrink. Father, we do not want to shrink in our spirituality, but we want to grow. And today we declare, Heavenly Father, that we love you. Help us to keep your commandments. This is our humble prayer today. And we plead that keep us in this house. Keep us studying your word. As we grow, may we grow to understand what you desire of us. For this is our humble prayer in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs>